Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood. Just in simple faith to plunge me neath a healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Trusting in Jesus. Do you trust in Jesus? Did you realize that how you listen to his word is a great indicator of whether you trust in him or not? It certainly is, and we're talking about how a person listens right now in our devotion. Say it with me, Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Remember Hebrews 3 and verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We've been talking about listening, and I hope that uh, you've been a part of these studies. They have certainly been uh, great for me to think about. Uh, I hope they have for you. We began Uh, with the words of Jesus that are repeated several times throughout the New Testament, when Jesus would sometimes close statements about John the Baptist, for example, or parables, or even his speeches to the seven churches of Asia in Revelation 2 and 3, with the phrase, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Now that is an admonition to listen to Jesus listen to his word. And so we have been identifying different listeners that the New Testament talks about. Uh, So far, we've talked about those who are dull of hearing and those who have itching ears, ones that uh, just can't hear, others that choose not to hear the words of Jesus or to only hear things that are pleasing to them. Uh, Today, Uh, we want to identify uh, another listener that Jesus talks about, and that is one who hears with a noble and good heart. Now, this is the type of listener that Jesus is looking for, and this is the type of listener that will benefit from the Word of God. So let's get right into the Word of God. In Luke chapter 8, and uh, this is the parable of the sower. Now, I'm going to uh, skip the introduction to the parable. Uh, Let me just sum it up like this. Jesus talks about a man who sows seed, and he says some of the seed falls by the wayside. That that seed is trampled, and it is eventually uh, devoured by the birds. Some of the seed falls by the rocks, rocky places, and it has no moisture in it. So it springs up, but then the sun kills it because it has no depth, no moisture. Some of the seed fell by the thorns, and it was choked out by the thorns. And uh, so it, it never did what it was supposed to do. And then some of the seed fell on good ground, and it yielded a crop. So the disciples asked for an explanation. So pick up the reading with me in verse 11, where Jesus says, Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. 
So in, in this parable, we're not just giving an agricultural lesson. Jesus is telling us the seed is the word of God. So all of this parable hinges around how the word of God is received. That's all about listening and hearing, isn't it? If you'll notice, when he explains this, each one of the soils, every one of them, he says that they heard. Notice carefully with me, verse 12. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So do you understand what's going on there with the seed by the wayside? It's someone that has heard. They did hear the word of God, but it didn't take root. It didn't stick. The devil was able to get them to discount the word of God before they took it into their heart, believed it, and it really made a change in their lives. So <clears throat> they heard, but they didn't really hear in a way that was effective. Okay, so continue with me. Verse 13, but the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. So again, you, you see the difference here in, uh, in the wayside soil. At least the, these folks heard the word and received it. They got it into their heart before the devil took it away. But the problem was it didn't sink down deep in their heart. Uh, they believed it. In fact, it says they received the word with joy, but they have no root. The, 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 the word of the gospel and true trust and faith didn't develop to the point that it would stay there deep in their heart. So uh, they believe for a while, but when temptation comes along, uh, all the things that were a part of their life before hearing the gospel, uh, they give up their belief and give back in to temptation. So let's continue along here. Uh, verse 14, Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. So again, these, these are different than the, the seeds that fell on the wayside or on the rock or on the thorns. The, the thorny ground uh, here is uh, a soil that is able to produce. And so it's a heart that is able to believe. And it does believe in the word of the gospel, but then hard times come. And so you know, with agricultural things, you can think about uh, drought or uh, pestilence or you know various things that will challenge a crop, and, and that's compared here to uh, pleasures of life, to riches, and to cares of this world. And so, when those difficult times come, they have not prepared their hearts in such a way to withstand that. And, of course, we do that by trusting in Jesus. Uh, and so the devil was able to get them to give up their faith. And they, they were not fruit producers. They didn't, uh, you know, talk about Galatians 5, uh, the, the fruit of the Spirit. They didn't produce the fruit of the Spirit because uh, the, the, the seed, the Word of God, did not transform their lives that would get them through these temptations uh, so they would see the escape that God provides, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. Okay, so let's get to the last soil that Jesus mentions here in verse 15. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. Now there is the kind of heart that we want to have, the noble and good heart. This takes in the seed and keeps it, 
And not only that, it makes the seed produce. It bears fruit. And notice that it bears fruit with patience. That means unlike the thorny ground, when difficulties come along, uh, you know, like uh, drought and pestilence and high winds and, and bad weather that's not conducive to a crop, when the devil brings temptation and uh, cares and, and, and all these things in our, into our life, the noble and good heart is able to bear fruit because it trusts in Jesus through those things. It finds the way of escape from temptation through those things. And the noble and good heart is able to bear fruit with patience to get through those difficult times. Now, let's look at a practical example of that in the New Testament. And to do that, uh, I'm going to go over to Acts chapter 17 and uh, take a look there at the Apostle Paul as he's traveling and uh, establishing churches. Um, I want you to notice uh, he's bringing the message to these various places. And uh, one of the places that he goes is to Thessalonica. And he has success there. Uh, Notice with me over in Acts chapter 17. It says, When they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, This Jesus whom I preach to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. So as you look at that, as as Paul is in the synagogue of the Jews in Thessalonica, what kind of hearts did he encounter? Well, the ones that are mentioned here seem to have the makings of noble and good hearts. At least that's All we know about them, now I understand that the uh, rocky ground and the thorny ground can look like that at the beginning, and and it's not clear until uh, trial and test comes along. But we're not told uh, about that at this point. We're just told how they receive the word, and they look like they're receiving it with noble and good hearts. But what we find out is there in Thessalonica, There were Jews who were not persuaded. Go back to the account with me in verse 5. But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And you you will notice there that uh, they do all they can to disrupt Paul's teachings And the brethren decide that it is so drastic and so dangerous that they're going to send Paul out of Thessalonica, uh, fearing for his safety. So notice with me, uh, beginning in verse 10, Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews, same place they went in Thessalonica. But notice verse 11, These that is, these Jews in the synagogue, these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women, as well as men. Now, don't we see the parable of Jesus coming into play there? In Berea, there were noble and good hearts. They received the word. They became believers. That is, they confessed their faith in Jesus as the Christ and repented and were baptized in his name and became his disciples. That's the key. But it doesn't end there because, remember, the good and noble heart is the seed that receives that that receives the seed the word of god and bears fruit with patience so it's not about just how we receive it 
but how we use it in the days ahead. So what about us? Are, have, first of all, have you received the word of God with a noble and good heart? Has it gone in and take root, and have you become a disciple of Jesus? And then secondly, if you have, have you borne fruit with patience? Have you continued to do what you can? If you're a man, have you grown uh, into leadership roles in your home? Have you sought to lead more, even perhaps by being a deacon or an elder in the church? Uh, if you're a woman, have you uh, grown by leading as a mother, uh, teaching your children, uh, teaching other people's children, encouraging the other women? Whatever role in life that you have, have you done that with patience? The noble and good heart does. Let's pray. Holy Father, we ask you today to have, help us to have the noble and good heart. We realize that the devil is seeking to destroy us, and he wants to start with our hearts. Help us to have the kind of heart that receives your word and bears fruit with patience. Father, be with all those who are seeking for you today. And be with all those who are struggling because of the temptations of the devil and help them to be strengthened in your word and in the power of your might. Father, we pray that you'll help us through this life and when you're finished with us here, that we might come to be with you forever is our prayer in Jesus' name. And amen. A noble and good heart. Uh, that ends the week and the Lord willing uh, next week we will start looking at why it is so important that we listen. Chew on these things we've talked about. We'll talk more later, the Lord willing. Have a great day. Yes, it's sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more.